In this topic, we are assigning oxidation numbers to atoms in compounds. So what does oxidation uh, state tell you, or the oxidation number of an atom tell you? Well, the oxidation number of an atom in a compound kind of gives you an idea of how many more or how many fewer valence electrons an atom controls compared to when it's in its normal pure state. So for example, if we're looking here, the highlighted atom is the sulfur atom. Its oxidation uh, number will give me an idea of whether it uh, controls more or less valence electrons than it does in, as pure sulfur. And we know that pure sulfur has six valence electrons because it is in group 6A. So oxidation number is a way, kind of a way to keep track of electrons. So how do we assign oxidation numbers to atoms and compounds? Well, here are some easy guidelines for us. Each atom in a free element has an oxidation number of zero. So we're assigning an oxidation number to sulfur, but it's not a free element, right? It's in a compound. So number one won't apply. However, number two will. This is an ionic compound. It's made up of iron two plus ions, and then we have a sulfate anion made up of sulfur and oxygen atoms. So this um, rule two says in simple ions, the oxidation number is equal to the charge of the ion. Well, what's the charge of this iron cation? It's two plus. How do I know it's two plus? Because the charge of sulfate is two minus, and this is a neutral compound. The charge of the cation must be canceled by the charge of the anion. I only have one sulfate, so the charge of this one iron ion must be 2 plus. That means that the, char that the oxidation number of iron in FeSO4 is 2 plus. So by starting there, we can get the oxidation number of sulfur more easily. So let's also look around. Let's see. The oxidation number of oxygen is normally minus 2 except in peroxides. Well, this is not a peroxide. It's an ionic compound. An example of a peroxide would be hydrogen peroxide, for example, H2O2. Oxygen, in this case, has an oxidation number, each oxygen atom of minus one. But here, each oxygen atom is going to have an oxidation number of minus two, meaning that each oxygen atom has two more valence electrons than it normally would in its pure state. So now we can determine what the oxidation number of sulfur is. How do I know it though? Well, if I realize that the algebraic sum of the oxidation numbers must be equal to zero for a neutral compound or equal to the overall charge for an ion, then I can determine the oxidation number of that one sulfur atom because of this fact right here. How many oxygen atoms do I have? I have four oxygen atoms. Each oxygen atom has an oxidation number of minus two. So the sum of the oxidation numbers from the oxygen atoms would be minus eight. I have one iron ion. It has an oxidation number of plus two. So the sum here from this one um, iron cation would be plus two. So I have plus two and negative eight. If I add those two together, I'm left with negative six. The algebraic sum of the oxidation numbers of, of the atoms in a compound must be equal to zero for a neutral compound. That means that the oxidation number of this one sulfur atom must be plus six. So let's add it together. Positive two plus positive six from that one sulfur atom here plus negative eight from these four oxygen atoms, each of which with an oxidation number of minus two, if I add those together, I get a grand total of zero. 
because this is a neutral compound, the oxidation, the sum of the oxidation numbers must be zero. And so the oxidation number of this sulfur atom must be positive six. So the oxidation number here would be positive six. What about for the bromine atoms here in molecular bromine? Look at rule number one. Each atom in a free element has an oxidation number of zero. It doesn't matter if it's monatomic, diatomic, or three or more atoms. Zero would be my answer there. Here we have another ionic compound. We have iron three oxide. Let's write out the chemical formula. Fe 203. Well, first let's ask ourselves, where can we start? We, we, we want to know the oxidation number for the iron atom. Well, I could immediately say that the oxidation number of this must be positive three. Why? Because it's iron three. Using the stock system, the Roman numerals tells us the oxidation state of the iron atom. It's the three plus oxidation state. So the answer here would be plus three. Now we could also find this another way. I see I have oxygen here, so let's work backwards from the oxygen. The oxidation number of oxygen is normally minus two, except for in peroxides. This is not a peroxide. So oxygen, each oxygen atom has an oxidation number of minus two, and there are three of them. So I have a total of minus six here. Now again, we know that the algebraic sum of oxidation numbers for compounds, because compounds are neutral, must be equal to zero. I have two iron cations here. So what must be the oxidation number for each of these two iron cations so that I also have a total of plus six? Well, each one must be plus three. If I have two of these, each one with an oxidation number of plus three, that total is plus six, plus six plus negative six is zero. Let's look here. I've got copper two plus ion. Well, I have copper two plus ion, but rule one doesn't apply because it's not elemental copper. It's an ion. So I will have to use rule two. For simple ions, the oxidation number is the charge of the ion. The charge of the ion here is positive two.